like when when we saw like those old scientists the episode i was just like oh this is just perfect it's cool right yeah, yeah. I don't know. that was oh. their idea too i didn't have to push for that you know calling it that uh, i'm so tickled Oh, uh, that, 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 see, I love it, because that, that was going to say, like, you know, kind of, did you, like, kind of slide that in? No, nope, perfect, works perfectly. I love it yeah, so much. great, because, like, it also, those, I mean, do, do you get, are we officially started? Should I be in, like, interview mode, or how do you want to go? Um, uh, I mean, technically, um, uh, I mean, mostly because, like, when I say needs no introduction, every person watching this knows who you are. Not to sound, <laughs> not, not to make that sound weird or anything like that, but every person watching this knows exactly who you are. Well, that's adorable. I'm very unused to that. Uh, we've, you know, Lower Decks is like, it's, it really does feel like I'm getting away with something because it is like my dream. You know, when I first went in to meet with Secret Hideout, I was like, oh, they're not going to want to make, they're not going to let me make a Star Trek show. And I think I was like down on myself for it because I was like, <clears throat> you know, who would want, would I even want to watch a Star Trek show that came from the way that I like to make TV, but then weirdly, you know, start Lower Decks and Solar Opposites, we we sold two season pickups for both of those shows within a couple of weeks of each other. And I was running Rick and Morty, and then I started running Solar Opposites, and then I sold Lower Decks. So I started running Lower Decks and Solar Opposites simultaneously first season, assuming that with the luck of the draw, one of them might not go or one of them might not last because like, you know, people sell and create and make pilots for hundreds of shows a year that don't go, you know? And of course, both of them are have, are, are going into their five, their fifth season. So I've been working on both of them simultaneously. But if you go back, what's weird about the first season of both of those shows and especially of Lower Decks is that's my first television show, you know, that's, Lower Decks pilot is my first original episode of a show of my own creation that got through the studio system and made it into, you know, actually being a show. And I wrote that simultaneously with the with the Solar Opposites pilot. So like, when you go back and look at that stuff, that's a guy doing it for the first time on both shows. You know, and like, it's wild. I was there because I was looking at the timeline of everything and I was like, no, no, shorty, this is going to come way before that. Or or Lower Decks has been in the works for so long. I was like, oh, he had a hell of a year. It was a yeah. wild year. And then the pandemic hit right when we premiered mm. both shows. And, you know, we went and did promo for Lower Decks before it came out. But like, I didn't love the original trailer and we didn't have any art or animation yet to show at like the first Star Trek Vegas we went to. Um, or the first Comic-Con. And so it just put us in a weird spot because it was like, you know, every Trekkie, including myself, when they announce a new Star Trek, you're like, all right, will this, how will this betray me? And then eventually <laughs> you, you get used to it and you like it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and you know, you've seen it with every Star Trek, except for maybe like, you know, a decade after the original series ended and the movie came back, everybody was pumped for that. But like ever since then, it's like TNG, D Space Nine, Voyager, Enterprise. You know, like every one of them, you go into it being like, oh, how are you going to let me down? This isn't going to be my favorite meal. You know what I mean? And mm. <clears throat> so this is all just getting back to everybody knowing who I am is weird to me because like, you know, Lower Decks is kind of my first show and I'm really, really proud of it and I love it, but I've only ever been to one convention to be able to promote it because of the pandemic and because of you know fatherhood and all these different things so like it 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 almost feels like it almost feels like i'm making it i'm also always making it a year before you guys have seen it so like of course i'm doing things that i like i'm experimenting for things with things that i like you know i'm i'm changing like the guy who writes now is different and the show is different and the actors are different and the characters are different like i grow as a writer and they grow as characters and they grow as actors and like you know what i mean like it's it's interesting th that like so much of it when i go back and look at it i'm like oh yeah look here's me here's me writing with a newborn here's me writing with with the pandemic happening and and my kid is just turning one here's you know like and, and and to think that all of you guys know me and that and that 
like my goal from the very beginning, God, this is the longest answer of all time and I'm really sorry, but the, uh, my goal from day one of the first writer's room of Lower Decks was, I said, listen, I love the original animated series and it kills me when people talk about their favorite Star Treks and they don't even put it on the list. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they don't even include it. And I remember telling the writers, no matter what we do here, I think it's a massive win if when people are talking about Star Trek, they mention Lower Decks at all. You know, like if we've done our job right, it will be something that wasn't a disposable knock on a franchise. It wasn't like a, it wasn't an asterisk. It wasn't like a thing that people saw and then were like, eh, okay, they made some Star Trek jokes. And I think that's, for me, what was important as a comedy writer, especially one at the beginning of my career was like, I'm gonna get to make a fucking Star Trek, you know? Like, this has to have, this has to be, surprisingly, and the network wasn't asking for this, but like, <laughs> this has to be a full ass Star Trek and it has to be a comedy all at the same time. And I think, I hopefully you saying that everybody here that I need no introduction is like that, that, that we accomplished that. Well, you know, if we're talking about Lower Decks and Shorthands, generally what we'll say is like, this is like a gift to fans. Like this is, you know, if you've been a fan forever, there's so much in that. But it stands on its own. Like, it's not just constant. Oh, sure. Like, oh, we're, we're, we're going to talk about how difficult you make my life with the Easter eggs. And I say that with love. Um, yeah. But like, it's not it's not hinging on that. It's not like you won't get yeah, the episode no. if you didn't know that, you know, Gary Mitchell uh, was imbued yeah, with powers no. in that episode. Uh, and that's why I think it works. So I, I love the fact that, you know, your, your nine-year-old is like, this is amazing, this is fantastic, I'm really enjoying this. And then you've got the people like me who are like, you know, with a you know, notepad going, all right, what else is in that museum? Um, you know, and it's so funny, like the Easter eggs, I think in some shows you put in Easter eggs because it's like, it's like saying, hey, this is, this is the, this is the geek tax we have to pay, but we would rather be doing a show without any of this shit. And for me, hmm. it's, I love, I love when Zephyrin Cochran gets mentioned in different Star Trek shows. I love when Kirk or Scotty gets mentioned or when they pull Scotty out of a Dyson sphere. I loved in Enterprise where they did the, 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 the mirror universe version of the Vulcans first movie. Like, I like the feeling there's very few franchises. There's Marvel, there's DC, right? And mm -hmm. like, <clears throat> Star Wars is sort of, starting to build that too but like but star trek always had it the feeling of not only is this a shared a shared universe bigger than just one show but it incorporates movies and incorporates books and comics and video games and that there's a thoughtfulness to it that if you see some of it you'll like it but if you've seen all of it it's a little bit more special you know and That's i feel like people don't give enterprise enough credit for deconstructing a lot of that and being like, oh, what if TOS did have enough budget to use uh, 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 shuttles landing on every planet instead of the transporter, right? Like, what if we didn't have the transporter really? And what if we had grapplers? And what if we didn't have shields? And like, the thing I love about Enterprise is you have to know Star Trek so well that you can say what they don't have and make it meaningful, you know, like rubbing that disinfectant goo on each other. Like, I know it's easy to make fun of, but like, well, I know what you mean. You yeah. have to really love something to be able to mess with it like that. And I really, Voyager does the same thing. It's all the same reason I love the show Stargate Atlantis. To do, to do Stargate Atlantis after eleven seasons and a movie, like it's, it's really hard, and and you find really weird stuff, which I love, you know. It, it, it it's it's gas as well. And like like one of the one of the best gags in Lower Decks still today is the Cerritos rocking up to the battle with the Borg and it turns right around and leaves. <laughs> I know, yeah, I love that. I, re and I remember it just tells the audience what the show is, right? Like I, and it was because it's such a it's so because every time you see because we're always following the, the hero ship, which is generally a variation of the word enterprise. And you know, it's first through the charge and everything. Because I remember the genuine shock. In the in the comments and everything, where people was like, but but they left, they, but they left. I was like, of course they did. They were an engineering ship. Yeah. They didn't get the hell out of there. You know? Yeah, yeah. They're the support craft engineering ship you didn't know existed before this show. They marked it and they turned around and they called it into the big guys and they left. 
Yeah, and and, uh, and and now we have you know kind of uh, I I have to I have to give I know like there's gonna be so many things I'll say that you like you'll have heard this on Hunter Ice Four. Uh, you gave us the Titan, mate. Thank oh, you. So pretty. I mean oh. that design. You know I. It's funny little things like that like things that feel like in the fandom we always believed them to be fully canonized you know stuff like that um taking taking things like that and then lifting them up and then that's also akin to like oh the pack leads like the like i i spent years because you you whippersnappers have you know <laughs> digital streaming and dvds and before it had to be like oh what vhs does the place have you know like and i remember seeing samaritan snare and then being for years not seeing it, I just didn't catch a rerun and being like, did I imagine that episode? You know? So like the like, did they were there really dumb aliens that stole Jordy? Like it was like really stuck out for me. And 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 the same thing with exocomps is like, that's why you see in 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 lower decks, it's almost like the things I loved when I was younger, I'm like, oh no, I'm gonna make that a bigger deal. Now it's everybody's problem. <laughs> I, I, I love I I love that you've brought up Peanut Hamper. She's the character I love to hate. I love um, to hate such her. such a crooked. Because she's not Starfleet. She doesn't feel Starfleet. She's like even worse than Fletcher, the character we had first season. Um, and it's rare that I, that I will... There's been like three or four bad Starfleet officers. You can be mm. bad if you're an admiral and you get away with it for some reason. You sort of expected like, at this point, isn't it? Yeah. But if you're mid-level... You know, if you're like the uh, the guy that they encounter season one when they uh, when they go onto the other ship and he's like trying to trick them into because he he doesn't want to be part of like epic adventures anymore. Uh, Tanya Rutherford, like he's a bad officer. You saw another one with Fletcher. Uh, Peanut Hamper is a bad officer. Like very rare to see bad officers in lower decks unless they're admirals. You know, when you're writing a show. You do that thing for a season where you're like, oh, I really want to do this episode, but we can't. We only have 10 episodes for a season. It wouldn't make any sense to do this soon, you know? Mm. And uh, like on Rick and Morty, I remember like first season, we we really wanted uh, Rick to be dating a Borg and the entire hive mind. And we couldn't get it yep. into first season. And then second season he does. It's, it's not quite a Borg, but it is a hive mind. And those end up being my favorite episodes because it's like, oh, it's like, you held the treat off and now I've done that enough where like we're getting into seasons where I'm like oh I finally get to do this crazy thing that I like the caves episode like I wanted oh. to do a cave episode from first season and now I'm like you know what let's just do it you know I love it actually because we we, we we had gas crack going through that one because it because it, it forces you to think we do spend an awful lot of time in caves in Star Trek don't we <laughs> like you know like and, it, and it's just and yeah. it's gas because one of the things, and I'm sure this has been said to you before, is that what perhaps we weren't expecting, particularly season one onwards, is you weren't expecting to feel as intensely as you do watch it. Like, yeah. I see in the, the big guys standing behind you there, Lena, that got me in no small parts. I know. I know, it is rough. And then everybody was so mad when I brought him back, but I knew I was going to be doing that. Like, it's such a Tasha Yar to do, you know what I mean? Like, and... Sometimes people get mad at that stuff, and I'm like, guys, this is this is a love letter to a thing that can be ridiculous. So sometimes it's going to be ridiculous, but but it's saying that the ridiculous is part of what makes it lovable. You know what I mean? Like I love that part of Star Trek. So like, why would we bury it? That's that's good stuff, you know? Because I mean, the, the franchise is inherently ridiculous. Of course, it's very serious and deals with very serious topics. Everything. Sure. But it is ridiculous. We push a button and suddenly I'm on the other side of the planet or, you know, we're we're traveling faster than night or, you know, these people, you know, who are clearly socks on someone's hand are actually, you know, this. That stuff doesn't ridiculous. bother me, though. That stuff, like, as long as they don't break their own rules of how far you can transport. And if you're in a movie, you can do whatever you want, right? But, like, you know, the sci-fi of it all, I'm all hooked into. The ridiculous stuff is, like, you know, Riker wearing that open-chested, like, shimmering outfit and, like, Cosplay you know, goals. You know, is something that drives me nuts about Star Trek is when somebody talks to, like they're so close to each other because of the framing, right? And they'll have an intense scene and then somebody leaves. And I love how long the remaining person will stare at the open door or even the closed door with like the music cue. It's so Star Trek and funny to me. And I've never quite captured that in Lower Decks. And I think a lot of the reason people feel 
on Lower Decks is Chris Westlake's music. You know, like we mm -hmm. really bring it with the music department and it makes scenes that like he once told me about not to switch to Star Wars hard, but he was once like we were sharing a whiskey or hanging out. And because I've known Chris since he was one of the first people I met when I moved to L.A. and I've been wanting to work with him forever. But he was once like he's the only guy I know who can kind of do John Williams, like what John Williams does, like gotcha. changing every one minute. Like, you know, and I think Lower Decks has a, a, an episode of Lower Decks has almost as much music as like a season of Discovery. <laughs> it's yeah, how many cues, like it's very crazy. But he once said that the reason people like The Force is because of John Williams. Because without John Williams' music, it's just a guy holding his hand up, right? But when that score comes in, you start to feel something. And that's Chris's job on Lower Decks is, I'm in charge of making people laugh and he's in charge of making people feel. And then, Tony and Jack and Eugene and Noel, they're like right in the middle of all of that, you know? And so anytime you're feeling something on Lower Decks, really listen to the music because that's our secret weapon. Like obviously, you know, I'm 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 very conscious of time and thank you very much, but like obviously I want like I'd love to go, oh, what's happening in season five? But at the same time, don't, because I want to find out with everybody else anyway. I don't know you can't, but but still. Um, I mean, season five is great. I can tell you a little bit, and we can go a little bit long. I I, I made you wait a little bit. So I think I can go to like eleven forty. Um, oh, you're very good. Thank you very much. Yeah. Of course, of course. The uh, um, season five is awesome. Uh, we're working on it right now. Uh, I can tell you, there's some really cool stuff on Orion. You know that last that last shot of Tendi being forced to go home, but then owning it and being mm. like, you know, I've got this. Like, I love Tendi. I love the stuff we do with her on Orion. With with. That's all I'll say about that. And then um, I think fans of the original animated series will love what we're doing on Orion. Um, we've got some amazing cameos. I think we really outdid ourselves this season. Like stuff nobody could expect. Stuff that was very difficult to lock everybody into. <laughs> um, and involved me like writing personal letters and calling in favors. Um, and this is this is me saying that after how hard it was to track down uh, Shannon Phil, who I love. Well, I, I was going to say, I mean, after how many years she came out to do this one scene, that's incredible. Well, I did it because Sean, now I've, since I've been catching up on your reviews, now I know you don't think I earned Mariner's backstory here. So I guess you'll have to, You'll have to live with me knowing how cruel and wretched you were to me. But, uh... I have right now cut a hole in my floor because I couldn't have the floor open up and swallow <laughs> me. So I'm actually just gonna just gonna just gonna dive in. Um... Yeah, it's, it's one of those things where like I knew that was a big ask from everybody, especially because like it so ties a character from a new series intrinsically to another one. But like there was a lot of stuff about Mariner I'd always known that I had never been sure I was ever gonna say, and it was just gonna pepper how I wrote it because like. You don't want to jump the shark by giving too much backstory and that was something we were always aware of on rick and morty too is like how much do you want to even know about rick but because then it 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 removes the ability to like find out things organically as you're going but you know the at the end of the day like you can only be so precious and you know what if we stopped making the show and i hadn't done it so i was like you know what maybe this is going to feel unearned to some people but like the show is called Lower Decks. It's inspired by this. The timeline all works out. It's something I've always thought about. So like, like her, Mariner being affected by the Dominion War was the most important thing to me. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah. a thing I wish we explored more in our shows. The, um, you know, maybe the animated comedy isn't the perfect place to do it, but the, you know. Well, I mean, the I Dominion the, War never happened and the chain things don't exist. Well, it's all an inside job. You know what I mean? So like. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you and Lieutenant Levy. Um, <laughs> But yeah, no, no, no. I mean, season five is going to be awesome. We've got some amazing, amazing stuff happening. We've got some really funny episodes that are inspired by other episodes in Trek. We've got some wholly new stuff that you guys aren't going to see coming. Um, we've changed the format of the show again because we we never do the same thing twice. So there isn't a season long big bad. You know what I mean? Like we, yeah. we, we self-contained that. And uh I'm trying to think of, I have a list of all the episodes right behind the computer here. Oh, oh man, we go, we go to a place that I've been wanting to go to in the show. It's so fun. Yeah, I'm not going to give you more because you're going to enjoy seeing it come out. 
But yeah, it's, a, it's now it's really fun. We're, we're going to spend the next few months just kind of going, right, okay, let's, you know, because eventually we'll get a trailer, hopefully. Do you know Q4, Q, Q1, Q2? Do you, do you I don't know? know. All I know is that for you guys to have a trailer, we have to have color cuts coming in to cut up. Right, so okay. Got and uh, I have not seen a color cut yet. So we're like, we're a little bit away from that. Um, I also like, you guys are such you know, detectives that when we put anything out in a trailer, you piece too much together. And then I'm like always fighting this battle of like, do we advertise the show or do we hide it? And the answer is we advertise it. You know what I mean? But like, I literally change stuff in the trailer that if you compare trailer shots, I have the artist remove stuff. Like I removed all the pips from the first, from the trailer last year. So that nobody and I think would I remember promoted right and you wrong. figured it out anyway. Did you remove Shaq's? from one trailer for, I think it was, must've been for season two or am I- did, but then he got left in a crowd shot by accident. So like Damn. somebody caught him nah. and uh, we removed all the pips, but then they put out um, a preview of the uh, the ship guide that had the double pips in it uh, before the, and so it's a, it's a, it's tough. And then, you know, if Frakes gets anywhere near us, he's going to tattle about everything too. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, at the end of the day, what am I going to get mad about that? Everybody's excited. Like it's, it's, you know, it's not the biggest deal. I just like you to be surprised when it comes out. Thank you so much for watching this abbreviated version of this podcast. Now, if you go to our audio platforms, you will get the full version of this podcast with this guest. So we really, really appreciate you subscribing to that. And you're just awesome and wonderful. Thank you so much.